Hello, good evening. It's Wednesday the 16th of January and we're taking a look at crypto. So last week we had our ETF launches and everybody's been, I think, a little bit shocked at how Bitcoin hasn't continued to rally. One good thing I remember very vividly, you know, when the CME futures were announced, and everyone went, wow, what a great way to cheaply short Bitcoin. And it dropped like a rock. We're not seeing that with these ETF announcements. Um, and I actually do think even with a pullback that it's, they're going to be really good for uh, Bitcoin longer term because they are opening up Bitcoin trading to so many people that did not previously have access in the United States or had their access cut off with the kind of um, government actions to shut it down. So it is good. But I think there, of course, is the narrative of people in uh, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust who are now able to um, sell Bitcoin that were previously locked up. There is, of course, the argument that they're being sold. I actually wonder, we could see as well uh, with these ETFs, because they are quite cheap to trade, I think that Bitcoin futures could maybe lose some volume and we could see people shorting as a hedge in these uh, ETFs as well. So it's going to take a little bit of what a time to sort itself out and it could be a little bit of choppy um, indecision while that happens. Um, I do think, you know, bigger picture, the macro factors for the rest of this year uh, for Bitcoin are really bullish. And I think that pullbacks can be seen as opportunities, but that doesn't mean we're not going to have one. And it could be potentially bigger than people are expecting. So let's short term talk about the levels that I'm looking at now. This is the Bitcoin CME futures. I'm looking at them because they have pretty good volume, um, certainly as big as Binance or bigger than Binance. And so they are really a big deal, the levels that we're looking at here. And they're very similar in terms of where we're at from the high that we made in November 21 to the low that we made in November 2022. We reversed at a 61.8 Fib retrace level measured from this high to low. And one of the, between the 61.8 and the 38.2, you can very often kind of go back and forward in that zone. It's called the golden ratio zone. This is a weekly chart. So for me, this 50% level in the middle is a little bit of a pivot level. And you can see in this range way back in early 2022, between January and March, we did go sideways in this exact range between 36,000 and kind of 48,500. Are we potentially going to be doing this again? Well, I have to say that I think this 50% level here in the middle at 42,000 is really important support. And if we get underneath it and it becomes resistance or sellers, you know, sell as we retest that level, I think that we could see that bigger pullback to 35,600. If we take a look at the spot prices, because sometimes these features are a little bit of a premium uh, to uh, spot Bitcoin, and we take a look at where these prices are in spot Bitcoin, the 61.8 Fib level up here is 48,650. The 50% pivot level is at 42,200. So they are very similar. However, one another way that I look at the market, for me, a confirmation of a reversal is a 236 Fib level a retrace from the whole swing. And that is also where we're sideways here at in Bitcoin, and that's 41,000. So I think, you know, looking at it this way, we could send a close and hold underneath 41,000 would lead it to a drop down to 36,200. And if we put our fibs back on the other way, they all kind of agree with that argument. So these, I kind of like it when the market does that because it kind of reinforces what we're looking at. So basically holding underneath 42,000 in Bitcoin, if it becomes resistance, could see a bigger drop down to 35,900. For now, though, we've really held this support of this sideways range that we've been in. And we are attempting a little bit of a bounce. Are we going to continue? I actually don't have to say I, I, it's neutral for me on the daily here. When we have flat sideways moving averages, um, it really kind of doesn't mean any trend. And I'm 
thinking that more likely we're going to see a lower high and this depending on how much we bounce in bitcoin we're either going to retest this level and then continue higher or we're going to see a lower high and potentially it breaks and and we see a, maybe a bigger topping pattern and then a pullback um pretty much every other market in the regular markets is really in really nasty sideways ranges to start the year most of the dollar pairs although we have seen some dollar strength against commodity currencies and commodities are certainly on the back foot um well not all of them but most of them um and nasty sideways ranges as well in stock indexes as we start the year sometimes it can take a week or two for kind of ranges to be established and trends to set up so um i think it's kind of a good time to be patient and plan and manage your capital so one chart that is really bullish and this narrative is carrying on is one thing we did think is when uh the bitcoin etf was announced that people would then start anticipating the eth etf and today for me eth against the dollar has potentially a little bit of a breakout so we just talked about how that 50 percent level can sometimes be a little bit of a pivot level and in eth if i draw fib retrace levels from the low that we made in 2018 to the high that we made here in 2021 for me a reversal at a 786 fib level is confirmed when you click, get above and hold above a 618 and your target then becomes a back test of this 382 so when we broke above 19,000 my target on the long side in eth became 3000 and i thought we would have a little bit of resistance at this pivot level in the middle at 2474 this is a weekly chart we're looking at and this week you can see that we've broken above it not only that if we dip down to the daily we have done a really nice three wave pullback to this level and are turning up higher again so i really do think for the next little bit this is going to be all about eth normally when eth is outperforming bitcoin it usually is a little bit of a sign of an altcoin season and altcoin rallies however because i think this is about the eth um etf it's not so much about altcoins at the moment unfortunately but this is pretty bullish and i'm gonna stay bullish i'm still looking for 3000 and i actually think that this is setting up really nicely now sometimes with these corrections when you have three waves they kind of turn into bigger ones so you can see a three wave pullback to this level and you might just see three waves up and it gets retested you know three wave moves can sometimes become bigger three wave moves before you get going but i maintain that 2474 is important support and resistance and holding above it on a daily and weekly basis sets course for 3000 next in eth dollar and if we look at eth bitcoin we've been looking for a bigger um, reversal in ETH against Bitcoin. I'll type this wrong. Oh, what's the matter with me? Now, when I looked at this on the weekly, um, instead of making a flag, what we've done here is we've double bottomed really with a little bit of a swing failure pattern um, at these lows. Let's take this off. And I said that this resistance came from these weekly moving averages, the weekly 200 moving average and the weekly 20 moving average. Also, another way to look at this as resistance would be to put Fib retrace levels on both swing. When you think you've got a three wave correction, I usually put the Fibs on both swings. And in this case, that gave us a 0 0.057 level that we need to hold above them. We've actually smashed through it with this ETH. So I think a lot of um profits are being moved from bitcoin into eth and this eth has more upside not only that but if we look at this as a, a rally and a big three wave correction and we break above all of these um uh, moving averages we do have a lot more upside to come for eth against bitcoin so for now and until i think we get the eth bitcoin eth etf um this is where your money should be, really, or not all of it, but I, I think it's a pretty interesting uh, trade idea. Now, I keep reading from people, you know, kind of warning that 
the SEC don't want to do an ECTF and they might not know any, you know, lots of negative. I am going to stick to the charts and um, I think a lot of this is about what insiders know. And one of the things about technical analysis is if you're not one of the insiders, you can see their footprints on the chart and what they're doing. And as long as this is going up, it's a really nice trade. And this is a really nice tradable pattern. And yeah, when you double bottom like this, we should be looking for at least a retest of the highs, if not new highs. Now, if we're going to do our big in ETH Bitcoin, big FIB levels where we might go from here. This was a very nice 50% retrace, pull back 50%. This really should be the next swing higher, and I really kind of like how this pattern has set up. See what I'm, this was a 50% if we take this off, put it the other way, you can see 50% back. Markets that mean revert tend to keep mean reverting, and that's exactly uh, what we've seen here. A little bit messy at this 50% retrace. And so that makes it really simple because again, if we're doing mean reverting markets and they tend to keep mean reverting, first target on the upside then from this high to this low is going to be the 50 percent isn't it before we get maybe a bigger pullback and that's at 0 0.068 so really our focus should move to there next and that's also we could argue pretty interesting support and resistance now if we're going to do, keep doing that 50 percent 50 percent we could when we get here see a 50 percent pullback before we continue higher in eth bitcoin so pretty exciting times and a pretty nice breakout today, I think, in or, or reversal, bullish reversal uh, in ETH today. Let's talk about some more because this is what honestly most stuff is doing. It's just going sideways. Very nasty drop in Doge to start the year. I kind of I wouldn't give up on Doge as long as Elon Musk doesn't give up on Doge. Potentially. I know this is, you know, kind of one of the original gangster meme coins, um, but I wouldn't give up on it. I, an awful lot of altcoins are doing this very similar pattern with weekly moving averages in that we flipped above them, pulled back and found support. Potentially, it might not happen straight away, but a lot of charts with this pattern potentially could start turning up higher soon. But for most of them, for the, they look like this, you know, since the start of the year, nasty drop. For me, when we have a nasty drop like this, particularly with this bearish cross of the daily moving averages, the main resistance when we have a really nasty candle like this is 50% back of the open close. And if we're going to reverse this nasty bearish reversal candle, we have to close more than 50% up on the open and close. So that means not the tail, the open close. And that's where resistance was when we tested it last Thursday. And that's going to be where we're going to be bullish for all of these that look with a similar pattern. That's what we've got to get above to be bullish. And whilst we stay underneath it, I'm afraid the path of least resistance is lower. And we could see another retest of the lows before this gets going. SEI is a coin that everyone is talking about at the moment, understandably. I have used some kind of fib projections here and it's going sideways, I think a little bit potentially a wave four before another swing higher and 1.15 is my next upside. But again, we're in a pretty nasty range. Now we haven't actually tested the highs in this one, but what I don't like is here in the middle, this rally was very choppy and overlapping. And so unless we break above these new highs, I think that the risk is that we've got some more sideways to go with this one and it's not ready to break out yet if you've been long unless you know unless we start taking out these lows um i wouldn't give up on this this looks like bullish consolidation but unless you got in from a good price this certainly isn't a buy uh right now let's take a look at tau which is bit sensor this has had a really nice move today and this is quite interesting because if we go from, I think this did a very nice five waves up, right? From the low that we made in May last year. So we're looking for a three wave correction in BitSensor until it, for it to start going up again. And this kind of looks like what we've got. My favorite chart setup, to be honest, is a three wave equal measures move back to a 50% retrace. I 
kind of don't like this rally in the middle, I have to say, because it doesn't look like three waves, which I normally like to see in a BWEG, but I am going to leave that for now because this 50% reversal, when you get back above this 38.2, which if we can and close and hold above it, 255, usually means we're going to do 50% the other way. So I measure from this high to this low and 50% back and back to this daily 50. For me, we'll see if we do three waves the other way. And these mean reverting 50% markets tend to keep working. For example, let's let's go down, let's zoom in here. At, so here was the first drop. And then where did we bounce to? The 50% level. Let me mark it really clear so you can see. Take everything off. We're just looking at that 50% level. So we dropped, bounced 50%, continued lower. If we move it down here, bounced 50% continued lower. So if we do the same thing from here, bounce our 50% then is 293. And so we're going to break this 50% pattern. If we break above 293, but I wouldn't, that would be my first target here on the upside. And I wouldn't be surprised at 293 if we didn't see a 50% pullback before we decide which way next. You know, we might go 50% and then lower. Or we might, you know, pull back and continue higher. So bit sense or that's how I'm doing it. And that's how these 50% retrace consolidating markets tend to um, work. OK, let's take a look at uh, another one. Let's take a look at a request for um, butterfly. I'm going to take a look at it priced against USDC. And this is one of those insane charts where we can't. So let's take a look at, I'd have got a request to do this one. Let's see it. Rat teeth. Okay. Aha, this is a chart that makes sense. Now, So we talked about three wave corrections and sometimes bigger three wave corrections and potentially this may have been a wave one five wave here. Looks like one, two. So either way, each time we've dipped down to these lows, we've had a really nice support. So let's assume from this low to this high, it was a wave one and we're going to I think from here, having done a double bottom or pretty close to one, let's see if it was actually a double bottom. My first target would really be these kind of range highs, but I would potentially look at these highs back into this range anyway, uh, between 0 0.256 and, 0 and 0 0.3, I think for butterfly. It is making a really nice base when we look at this on the weekly. And if we measure from the high to the low, that 236 Fib level should really be our first target and a confirmation of a bottom. Wherever that comes in, it's my first target. And oh, look, that's right between these. So double bottom confirmation level will be holding above 0.26 and if we can hold above 0.26 we're going to look for this 50% level next at 0.555 I think it looks really good but it is kind of bottoming making a pretty nice base and I'm looking for a retest of that 0.26 hope that helps let's look at OFN this is one I was looking at last night open fabric to see if we were going to break out on the daily and go higher again we didn't, we back tested these moving averages and unfortunately we're still in this correction, no uh, breakout yet. This is, um, yeah, need to be a little patient. I would like to see a bottoming pattern in this one, either a high or low and then a breakout from this channel or a double bottom. Otherwise, again, with these new coins, you need sometimes you can come all the way back and retest these lows as we just showed in Butterfly. 
Okay, I hope that's useful. Good luck. Trade carefully. It could be a little bit choppy between now and March, but um, I think we will potentially find out soon which way we're going. And um, really good things are coming. We just need to be patient in these markets. And let's hope for peace outside of these markets.